this year has been kind of long. A lot has happened. Uh, if I could dissect a few things from this year, they would be number one, prototype, prototype, prototype. Nothing is final. Nothing should ever be final. You should be able to make mistakes and just kind of adapt because nothing is, nothing is ever perfect. Nothing will ever be perfect. Things have to be accepted by the public. They have to be tested. They have to, they have to be tested to work several times. Being okay with something not working the first time is normal and it's okay. It's not a big, it's not a big deal to fail. Believe me, I failed so many times and it, it has, it has only made me where I am today. The second one is documentation. Have fun with documentation because it only exists until the project's over. If you, unless you have, you know, something well, like tangible to watch, like this video, for example, just have process that's tangible. I do not consider myself a graphic designer, nor do I consider myself a print designer or anything like that. I am, at its heart, a communication designer but specifically an experience designer. I like creating experiences for people. I think that I have like this feel for how the public responds to things or how, how much, what kind of story I want to tell um, in a way that's visual, emotional, physical. I, I, like, I like messing with those. To make dark, scary areas in Detroit less scary at night. There's an overpass on 2nd in Milwaukee and and Cass in Milwaukee that's recently been developed for like the, re the reflectors and all that stuff and I wanted to do a, a commentary on that saying that like just a different perspective on what an encounter could be like at night so I you know got like a little I figured like passing a ball would be a good connector like if you could meet somewhere in the middle and already have a connection when you got to that point then you know you're not so you're not so strange to one another. It was basically an effort to make those those nighttime encounters less scary and kind of fun. So the next project was called Ping Pang, and we we're trying to uh, find a way to convert energy from a ping pong ball to be used after the game, like on a on an iPhone or an iPad or laptop, just to show that like a bounce would be able to produce you know, workable energy. And this one was kind of nice because we incorporated like a very fun, natural game into something that was beneficial for you in the future. So, Come Clean started out when we, um, we were going through abandoned buildings for our chance project. And we had to, first of all, determine which buildings by chance and determine, you know, a subset of those buildings by chance. So we ended up exploring four buildings. We went to this one. We went in and we found these like 8,000 of these cards which had someone's name, address, and phone number from 1967 and previous. Um, so like this was like the only lead we had to like what this building could have been. Like it didn't really have any identity. Um, but yeah, we so we started out just calling each of the numbers and we called about out of the 8,000 we called about like a thousand at least and uh, out of those thousand three people picked up the phone very old uh, some senile uh, we ended up just exploring the building like what 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 could we find inside the building what story could we tell about like what's what is this place because these cards are from a mortgage burning in the 60s right after the riots so that's like one lead and others were we thought it was we, we thought it was a theater. We were trying to find like a name for this project really fast because we were trying to find permission to like you know go inside legally so we weren't like you know running around scrambling to not get caught. I'm the owner of the building. Called him up and said you know like listen we want to beautify your building and uh, we you know we might paint but we we're, our intention is to like project the beautiful history that the building has on it. We didn't really have a solid plan at the time. We just said, you know, we want to beautify it. We might do some painting. We're going to, you know, end up projecting on it. And he gave us permission. He, we, uh, we had like a, a legal document signed saying that like, you know, we were allowed to do everything. And we, so we started like, you know, thinking, how can we project on this? You know, first we have to repaint the building. We have to make it look nice during the day so that it can also be clean during the nights so when we're projecting on it. It'll look all right. And then, um, yeah, we just kind of like run and gunned it. We got 
a bunch of paint. Okay, we want, we, we wanted to make, make sure that we got this color. The paint was inspired by the color of the cards, the color of like the paper, how old it was like texturized, which is why we picked that orange. And, uh, and we wanted to give the building a new name because the future home of New Beginnings was going to be built, but never was, it never got completed. So the name was up there, but it was like decrepit. We wanted to like give it a new name. We wrote come clean on top because not, we weren't necessarily cleaning the inside of the building or like physically cleaning, but we were cleaning the image that it gave the neighborhood because this was not like a very like appealing neighborhood to the average person. It, was, it didn't have like neighborhood qualities. There were two houses across the street, which at first I was intimidated by, but they ended up being the most helpful source of like equipment and you know, like having a generator. So shortly after that project, I was losing a lot of weight. I was peeing constantly. I had no idea what was going on. I was drinking water all day and it was just going like right through me. And I, uh, I found out that I had type one diabetes mid semester. So I, uh, I was kind of like learning a different degree while getting my graphic design backslash communication design degree at the same time. But yeah, I was faced with what my senior thesis was gonna be about and I decided to do it about the type, the type 1 diabetic lifestyle and really kind of engage like what's going on, how does it work, how, is, how does it work to one who doesn't understand it, how can someone with diabetes appreciate the work I'm going to do. Um, so I decided to start a vlog, which you're a part of right now, and just kind of like get everything out. If I'm going through, you know, um, an episode, then I turn the camera on and I record myself going through, you know, a hypo attack or a hyper attack where I'm low or, or really high on blood sugar. And, you know, it became a really useful tool because I would be able to address a lot of the, the problems that are going on like currently that are like serious problems but be able to laugh about them later on um, and kind of and, and if you could laugh about your disease then you kind of have a grasp on it whereas you know if, if it freaks you out then it kind of controls you um, so I propose to make this channel the, the type 1 experience um, T1E as opposed to T1D and um, and it kind of took off has uh, kind of evolved. I'm, I'm not just vlogging anymore. I, I want to be, you know, a part of the the YouTube experience. While I'm working on this project, I'm in another class called Experience Design, but it was about also this duality where, you know, we we make assumptions about people based on how they look from afar, and until you approach these people or until they approach you. That assumption isn't clarified until you get to know them until, or until you have a conversation or say hello or do the, the head nod. It's not clarified until you get personal. <clears throat> Ultimately, like this turned into how well do you feel like you belong in this space, essentially, uh, by being looked at. When you look at someone, you have power over them. You give them a perception of how you actually view them. Do you, do you stare down? Do you, you know, go on your phone or are you the person to say hi or give a head nod or, you know, it was really testing your character. If you get stared at, if you get, you know, looked at like that by someone of a different race or of a different gender, etc., how does that make you look as a person? Thank you for being a part of my senior review. I will not see you next year for the same thing. <laughs> forgot to say.